Okay class, today we're going to talk about parametrics. And parametrics are different because up until now we've only been able to look at a single equation using two variables like an x and a y. But now with a parametric we're introducing a third variable which is a parameter. So in this example our parameter is t. Um, and if we were to think of an equation, um, say for a ball, that might be a downward facing parabola. Um, in the past, we would know how far over and how far up the ball was. So we could get the horizontal distance and the vertical distance. The difference, if this were equation for a ball, um, we could look at after time t, so we could have the variables time from 0 through 5 seconds, so we could see the path of the ball after 0 seconds, 1 second, 2 seconds, and we can find its horizontal distance and its vertical distance. So it gives us more information, which is makes it a more powerful tool. Do with the example one is we're going to make a table of values and we're going to plot the parametric equations. So here I've given you the values of t. Sometimes if you're not given t, you'll have to pick your own variables. So when t equals zero, we're going to plug it into the x equation and get our x values out. Um, and we're going to plug zero in for our y equation and we get y is one minus zero or zero. We're going to go all the way through and we're going to fill out the table. We take what put t equals one into our x. We take the square root of one. We're going to take the square root of 2, which in decimal is about 1.4. Then we're going to do the square root of 3, which is about 1.7. Then we do the square root of 4, which is 2. And then we're going to take the square root of 5, which is 2.2. We're going to plug all of these values for t into our y equation. So we're going to plug y equals 1. And um, I clearly can't subtract. We're going to start with plugging in t equals 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. So we're going to plug in t equals 1. Then to get this spot, we're going to plug in t equals 2. So 1 minus 2 is minus 1. And then you can just plug them all in there. And so now we have our x and our y values. And what we're going to do is we're going to plot the x comma y. So we're still going to have um, our graph looking at x and y. But from our table, we have... Um, more information. We have the time. Okay, so we're going to plot our x and y. So we're going to plot 0, comma 1. So it starts up here. The next point we're going to plot is 1, comma 0. Um, so we can make this value 1, comma 0. And we're just going to plot our points 1.4, comma negative 1. So here's about 1.4, about negative 1. 1.7, negative 2. So we're getting closer. Then we have 2, comma, negative 3. We have 2.2, 2, negative 4. So we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So 2.2, 2, negative 4. Okay, so we've plotted the x and y values, and we've plotted them in order, um, which is important. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these. And we have an arrow, and it's important to show the dots um, and the direction that we're going. So the t variable, the time, that tells us um, um, the order in which we are going. So we always need to plot um, our points in increasing values of t, and then we're going to trace the curve in this specific direction, and that direction is called the orientation. So we're going to mark the beginning with the start, and then we're going to have an arrow indicating the direction. Okay, so we did A, and now what we're going to do is we're going to graph it on the calculator. So you need to pull out your graphing calculator. Okay, so now we're going to graph this on our calculator, and we're going to graph um, parametric. Okay. So we're going to press mode. Um, and then we need to um, click on instead of a function, which yours is at, we're going to click on parametric. So yours is probably highlighted on function there, but we're going to highlight a uh, parametric. So make sure par for parametric is um, highlighted. And it doesn't matter right now if we are radian or degrees. Um, so it could be either. So we're going to go to our y equals now, and now we have x1, t, y1, t. So we have our parametrics. We have the x part of our parametric and the y part of our parametric. So we're just going to put those in. So our x parametric was square root of t. So we're going to do square root of t. Um, and now when we press this x, t, theta, n button, if we press it, it used to come up as x. Now it's going to come up as t. 
and then the y part of our parametric is 1 minus t so we're going to do 1 minus t and uh, we're going to adjust the window so we have t min t max so when we graph this our table our table of values our t's went from 0 to 5 and in steps of 1 because our table was 0 1 2 3 4 5 um, if our table was you know minus 1 to 2 in steps of 1 half like if it was 0 or sorry minus 1 minus 1 half 0 1 half 1 1 and a half 2 then we'd have minus 1 to 2 in steps of 1 half um, our x min so just look at your x values our x went from 0 we're looking at the table up to 2.2 so I'm just going to do 2.5 um, we want instead of 0.5 and if we want it to match up exactly with our graph which had values up to 3 you could do that as well our y's went from um, minus 4 to 1 so I'm just going to do it minus 4 to 2 and I'm going to do those in steps of 1 because that's how we had our graph um, and as always when you're going to graph thing when you're in your y equals you should make sure up here that all your plots are off um, if you have any of them are highlighted like this um, where you have it dark then you need to go press arrow up press enter um, so that you turn it off see how all of them are not highlighted so you need to turn your plots off so just make sure you don't have that and then when we graph it um, it shows it's being graphed out there and what this does is your calculator just plots a bunch of points and then connects it with straight lines so this doesn't look very smooth in order to make it smooth you play around with your t-step so t-step our table went in ones um, and so that goes um, it matches that but if we make our say our t-step point oh one then we're going to plot 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, all the way up till we get to Tmax 5. So we're going to plot a ton of points with the calculator is and then connect those ton of points um, with a smooth curve. And if you see, it takes a lot longer for it to graph out, but you can see it being graphed out the orientation, right? So we can, s it's plotting it in increasing values of t in this specific direction so that we know that this parametric if this were say a ball would go that direction okay and this graph does look like ours so we've done a good job um, and we've done it in parametric so let's go back to the PowerPoint okay so from graphing this on the calculator we know that we had to go mode to par mode uh -huh parametric mode it didn't matter about degrees but the thing that I did mention was that the t-step um, needs to be small so sometimes you need to play around with it if you made it super small like 0 0.0001 go ahead and plug it in you'll see that it's going to trace it out really 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 slow because it's going to have so many of these t values so it's going to be plotting a ton 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 of points so it's going to take a long time for the computer your calculator to plot all those points and then connect each of those points with the straight line but that's how you get it to look more curvy versus more square Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to find the rectangular equation by eliminating the parameter and how does the graph differ from part A. Okay, so to, to eliminate the parameter, what we're going to do is it's just like a substitution equation, like when we solved with substitution elimination in Algebra 1. So if we have x is square root of t and y is 1 minus t, what we're going to do is we're just going to solve for t and then when we solve for t then we're going to plug in to the other equation so for this first equation to solve for t I can square both sides so squaring both sides I get x squared equals t so now if t equals x squared I'm gonna plug my x squared in here for y into my y equation t equals x squared so I'm gonna plug it in I get y is 1 minus x squared notice there's no parameter x was what or sorry t was the parameter so we've eliminated the parameter there's no more parameter and how does this compare with the original graph well if you remember from algebra 2 this x squared means it's a parabola 
the negative means it opens down and this one means that there's a vertical shift up one. So using this little graph here, it would look something like this. Okay, just a very rough sketch. So it's a downward facing. How does it differ? Well, this has both sides of the equation of the positive x values and the negative x values. But over here, the original one, it only had the um, positive. So this equation gives us both sides of it, but our parametric only gave the right-hand side. So we have only the right-hand sides because we only plugged in positive values of t. We didn't plug in the negative values of t. So here we only have positive x values. See, we only looked at when we graphed it here, the positive x values. So to get this, the original equation, the with the eliminating the parameter, um, we only want to graph this for x is greater than or equal to zero because if we graphed it only with x is greater than or equal to zero, we would only be seeing this part of it, which is the same as what we had. So what we're doing is we're restricting the domain. So this would be the final answer. Okay, so in problem number two, we are going to eliminate the parameter. So we're going to start off with our first equation, x equals t squared minus 4. We're going to solve for t, so we're going to bring 4 to the other side. And then I'm going to take the square root. When I take the square root, you get plus or minus x plus 4 equals t. Okay, um, and then I'm going to plug this into my y equation. My y equation is 1 half t, so I'm going to replace t into here. So I end up with y is 1 half times plus or minus the square root of x plus 4, or y is plus or minus 1 half the square root of x plus 4. If you remember from algebra, um, a square root function looks like this, so the negative square root function would be reflection, and that's a sideways facing parabola. But we've never seen a sideways facing parabola. So here, or we've never seen a sideways facing parabola written like in this notation. Um, and this is writing y as a function of x. But let's solve the pr uh, equation eliminating the parameter the other way. We can write x as a function of y. So we're going to take our y and we're going to solve for t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 2y equals t. And now I'm going to plug this into the x equation. So my 2y equals t. So I have x is 2y squared minus 4, or x is 4y squared minus 4. Bring out the 4, y squared minus 1. Now this is notation that you've seen. This is the conic notation for a sideways facing parabola, and you already know that. Okay, so we can see that this is a sideways parabola. So it opens to the right. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so eliminating the parameter with this one is a little different because we don't have t, we have a theta. So when we have trig functions, we're going to use the Pythagorean identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. So I'm going to take each of these and solve for cosine theta to plug in here. So I'm going to cosine theta. Um, equals x, so what is cosine squared theta? So x squared is cosine squared theta, if I just square both sides. So for the sine theta, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. y over 2 is sine of theta, so I divided the original equation. Now I want a sine squared to plug in, so I'm going to square both sides. So I have y over 2 squared is sine squared theta, or y squared over 4 is sine squared theta. So I'm just going to plug in cosine squared theta, is x squared and y squared over 4 is sine squared. So plugging that in, x squared plus y squared over 4 equals 1, and that is an ellipse. So you can write it over 1, so that is the equation for an ellipse. And since the bigger number is under the y, it's a vertical ellipse. Okay, and we are done. So I really encourage you to read the section in your book. Um, there's a lot of good examples, especially for graphing. It shows some calculator activities. It shows the steps on the calculator um, and eliminating the parameter in graphing, which is really helpful. So have a good night.